Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're bringing back episode 3 of our optimization series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is actually quite important and is kind of underrated when it comes to optimizing your game, and that's actually size maps. Um, so you might ask, why are these so important? Well, with size maps, there's a lot of actually useful information that's in here that a lot of people don't realize. Um, first, let's talk about what are size maps. So size maps kind of handle um, sort of the size of your um, actors in your game, but also they handle both the disk size and the memory size. Disk size is the amount of space taken up when it is stored on the computer as like an executable uh, versus when it's memory size, that's how much space it takes up in your RAM. Now, uh, these are pretty important metrics to sort of consider when you're thinking about your game because these actually, whenever you load an object into your game, the memory size is what actually gets loaded. So for example here, this player pawn example I have set up, that's almost a half a gig that just gets booted into your RAM. So that's a huge amount of um, memory that's eaten up by this one single actor. And something you need to consider that may not be easy to tell at first, I mean, they kind of make it a little easy because they show you, you know, the size of each thing. But whenever you load something alongside an actor, you then also get that included with the actor. So for example, here, I'm loading my player pawn, and because I have a direct reference to the game instance in memory, I am then loading everything that's in the game instance, which includes base ship freighters, base ship AI, fleet manager, fleet targeting UI, missile tube BP, like all of these things are getting loaded, which normally you don't really honestly need, um, especially at the start of the game. So, Let's also take a look at this size. And so something I want to show you is there are a few different ways to optimize this. Um, now, the biggest way is going to be for things that you need to still stay in the game or to, to access some like the player, you're going to want to do something called uh, delegates or interfaces. Um, you can also use gameplay tags. Um, so there's a few different things you can do to sort of take the place of a direct reference to an object. Uh, for example, if you uh, want to dock with a space station, Instead of getting a direct reference to the station, uh, when the player is close enough, the station itself would then have a interface that would be like a station to ship interface and both the player and the station implement this interface. On the station side, it just sends over the whatever data you need for the station for the player to dock. And then the player just goes, oh, I received this message with this information. Therefore, that's how I'm going to use that to dock. And that, that's just very simple ways to sort of replace it. Now, let's say it's old code or something you need to get rid of. You can search for it. So let's actually go ahead and do that here to kind of show you what that looks like. So on my player here, um, I can you can see I have a vent test here. It's those vent plates reference. Now, for now, this is the only thing that I have that references that. But in your game, you may have, for example, maybe let's uh, drop one of these here. Let's do a get here and let's say We'll come into one of these random and we'll have a set here. So let's say you come in here and you don't know where all the different options are. Now, of course you can just delete this, but you know, there may be times when you need to actually make tweaks to code before you can actually remove something. So usually what you can do is you can go find references and it'll search for them. And another way you can do this if you're going to, you can do find to here, or you can do a find in blueprints. So if you know that this variable is used in other blueprints elsewhere, you can use this to find it to actually help you remove the code before you actually completely delete it out of there. Uh, but yeah, so with this, we can then double click one of these and it'll actually take us right to it. So we can delete it and then go here and of course delete that. Of course, you know, that's the only two things we had and we're not really doing much. That's all we need to do. And then we can hit delete on that and that will actually delete the variable itself. Now at this point, I've completely cleared out all the variables and so there's nothing left in this player. So if we come back here and do the size map again, as you can see, boom, that, that vent is gone. The actual memory usage has gone down on the disk size. If we go to actually the memory size, um, it has also gone down slightly as well. Um, now, of course, this depends on what exactly you're moving and, and how big of a thing it takes up. You want to kind of focus on the biggest things and find better ways to interact with them. So, for example, here, instead of directly referencing the game instance, I can use, you know, interfaces and things like that to reach it. 
and that would help massively with, with taking down a huge portion of the actual um, size here because I mean this is pretty large I probably shouldn't be referencing this directly uh, but yeah so that's the majority of what you need to know about size maps if you have any questions definitely leave them down below but otherwise good luck good hunting <laughs>